Welcome to Snippets, Bits and Bobs, a weekly theme channel of an eclectic collection of excerpts, quotes, poetry and lyrics, read in a soft-spoken, slow ASMR style to relax, inspire or evoke a memory or two, perhaps to bring a smile or make you laugh. So I hope you'll be as excited as I am each week as I share new themes with you. If you are not familiar with what ASMR is, please check its definition in the description box below. Welcome again to our oasis or retreat space. Take a break. Relax. Linger a while to unwind to decompress, to laze. The Greek muses, there are nine. Who are they? What do they do in Greek mythology? As you know, a muse is anyone or anything that inspires an artist, musician, or writer. But these, however, are the great muses of Greek mythology. The Muses were nine different goddesses who were the embodiment or the patrons of the arts, literature, and the sciences. They are Calliope, Cleo, Erato, Euterpe, Melpomene, Polyhymnia, Terpsichore, Urania, and Thalia. They were the daughters of Zeus, the sky god, and leader of the Olympians, and Mnemosyne, the titaness and goddess of memory. They lived on Mount Parnassus or Mount Helicon, and their myths and inspiration were related orally during the times of ancient Greece. And many people believe that the inspiration they required to write poetry, literature, music, or any artistic creation came from these nine muses. Their voices, songs, and dancing were meant to relieve the sorrows of the world. So, why this topic today? For me, there is no other time more apt to relieve the sorrows of our country and the world than now. I won't say it's only the muses, but their myths and patronage are inclusions to what inspires me to create and to continue um, creating with this channel and to pay them homage today. So, I've chosen four of them to talk about today. Named Calliope is the goddess of eloquence and epic poetry. As the eldest, wisest, and chief of the muses, Calliope presides over eloquence and epic poetry and people with creative talents called upon her to help inspire and guide their work, which she did regularly when she wasn't busy falling in love. She was overseeing music, song, and dance. Calliope inspired and was referred to in many famous works of literature. It is said that she was the muse for the Iliad and the Odyssey. And although not verified, many people believe she is what inspired Homer's work. This Greek goddess is also said to be part of the Roman epic poet uh, Virgil's poetry, the Aeneid. She is invoked. Uh, Calliope is also referred to in 
Dante's Divine Comedy, where dead poetry is given new life thanks to the goddess and her abilities to inspire. Dante refers to Calliope in his Divine Comedy as follows. Here, rise to life again, dead poetry. Let it, O holy muses, for I am yours. And here, Calliope, strike a higher key. Accompany my song with that sweet air which made the wretched magpies feel a blow that turned all hope of pardon to despair. Calliope had children with King Ergus of Thrace and loved by the god Apollo. She had one son, Orpheus, with the king and two sons with the latter, and they were named Hymen and Ialimus. The bard Orpheus is the most famous child of Calliope, and he was, um, he was murdered, and Calliope was absolutely devastated. And the island of Lesbos was dedicated to her son, who has also been mentioned in literature throughout the centuries. Calliope also had a relationship with Achilles. She taught him how to sing, which encouraged rowdiness while he drank. And when you hear about an Achilles heel, it refers to the arrow shot by Trojan Paris that brought down the legendary mortal. Our next muse is Cleo, and Cleo is the muse of history or historic poetry. Her name means to make famous or to be famous. And she is often shown holding a scroll that is open or sitting beside a chest full of books. Cleo was the patron of history and the lyre or guitar. And she is often depicted holding a clarion in one hand and a book in the other. So sometimes you see her with different objects in hand or standing or sitting near these um, books. Cleo was sometimes called the proclaimer. You know, so the symbols would include the scroll or books or tablets. And she was considered the celebrator of history of great deeds and incredible accomplishments and she would proclaim them and recount the history of the heroes and her name came from the same Greek root word that means to celebrate to recount or to make famous If you are enjoying this video, I invite you to subscribe, to like, or comment. Thank you. Our next muse is Irato. Irato is the muse of love poetry and lyric poetry. And Irato means desired. Or lovely. In the Orphic hymn to the Muses, it is Irato who charms the sight. Since the Renaissance, she has mostly been shown with a wreath of myrtle and roses, holding a lyre 
or a small kitara, a musical instrument often associated with Apollo. In Simone Vouillet's representations, two turtle doves are eating seeds at her feet. Other representations may show her holding a golden arrow, reminding one of the eros, the feeling that she inspires in everybody. And at times she is accompanied by the god Eros, holding a torch. Erato was named with the other muses in Hesiod's Theogony, and she also invoked at the beginning of a lost poem, Radin, that was referred to and briefly quoted by Strabo. The love story of Radin made her a supposed tomb on the island of Samos, a pilgrimage site for star-crossed lovers in the time of Posianius, and Erato was linked again with love in Plato's Phaedrus. Nevertheless, even in the third century BC, when Apollonius wrote, the muses were not yet inextricably linked to specific types of poetry as they are today. Erato is also invoked at the start of Book 7 of Virgil's Aeneid, which marks the beginning of the second half, or Iliadic section of the poem. Our next muse is named Urania, and she is the inspirational spirit of space, astronomy, and astrology, and later, Christian poetry. As one of the muses, Urania carries a globe and holds a peg in her right hand. With her eyes firmly fixed on the night sky, she is an inspiration to astronomers and those seeking the answers to deep cosmic questions. Her cloak is covered with stars, and if you petition her nicely, she might reveal the secrets of the universe. Urania is often associated with universal love and the Holy Spirit, sometimes identified as the eldest of the Divine Sisters. Urania inherited Zeus's majesty and power and the beauty and grace of her mother, Mnemosyne. Those who are interested with, who are interested in philosophy and the heavens are dearest to her. Those who have been instructed by her, she raises aloft to heaven, for it is a fact that imagination and the power of thought lift men's souls to heavenly heights. James Percival, in his Ode to Music, wrote, Urania, o'er her star-bespangled lyre, with touch of majesty diffused her soul. A thousand tones that in the breast inspire exalted feelings over the wires then roll. How with the call of Jove the mist unfurled, and o'er the swelling vault the glowing sky, 
the newborn stars hung out their lamps on high and rolled their mighty orbs to music's sweetest sound. During the Renaissance, Urania began to be considered the muse for Christian poets. In the invocation to Book 7 of John Milton's epic poem, Paradise Lost, the poet invokes Urania to aid his narration of the creation of the cosmos, though he cautions that it is the meaning not the name I call. So my final comment. What muse or muses of the past or present inspire you? What inspires you to be your most creative self? I'm so glad you could stop by today. Thank you for watching. If you like what you heard, please share this video. Welcome new subscribers. If you haven't already, I invite you to subscribe and hit the like button. Also, share your comments below about this video and tell me what topics you want to hear in future videos. If you'd like to see recent videos of snippets, bits and bobs, see the links in the description. Also, click on the bell icon on your right to get the latest videos when they are uploaded usually each week on Tuesdays. Can't wait to share next week's theme with you. So have a good week and see you soon at Snippets, Bits and Bobs. Bye-bye.